Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, good evening. Thank you so much for that introduction, David. And welcome, everybody, to our webinar on successful self-dentistry. Um, this is my first webinar. I've done a lot of interviews and stuff, but I you know it's great to do the webinar because there's a lot of visual stuff that I can show you, um, especially when we get deeply into the care of the teeth and the eight successful steps for having a really healthy, happy mouth. So welcome, and there's also going to be a Q&A uh, towards the end of it, which everybody will know about, and I believe that you can email in your questions. I'm going to see them, and then I'll be able to answer them. Um, so, you know, take out a pen and paper and um, write your questions down, and I'm sure in the next hour or so you will learn more about your mouth than you have ever known, or that and perhaps any uh, visit to the dentist has taught you so far. So, thank you for coming. Um, in the next while, we're also going to learn how to get rid of active oral decay in your mouth, and how to like um, take care of your mouth so that you're not going to be, so that every tooth that you have right now, you'll hopefully have till until you're off the planet. So um, the current statistic for um, for people is if if you're about 90 or so, you only have about 10 percent of your teeth left in your mouth. So something isn't going right, and um, we're going to find out about that because you want to from the, this moment forward, you want to keep have everything in your mouth be as it is or even better. So that's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn how to avoid the dentist without ignoring your teeth, because um, that's another popular thing to do too. It's like, oh, dentists or the whole dentistry thing, I don't think they've got it all figured out yet, so I'll just ignore it all. And uh, we're also going to learn about each part of our mouth, the teeth, the gums, the enamel, um, the tongue, the saliva, all of that will be talked about. And uh, I'm going to go deeply into the eight steps as well. So, um, welcome, and the first thing I want to talk about is habit, and um, what what not to do. I'm sure when you were growing up, you were told that like brushing your teeth is a good habit, and that you need to follow good habits uh, to have a clean mouth, and bad habits that create cavities, and um, then you're told to brush your teeth with toothpaste, hopefully you'd be flossing, and then you go to the dentist, um, hopefully... Um, they say between once and twice a year and then you do all that or you don't but you're doing that and you're still getting cavities and you're still having issues or your gums are bleeding bad breath all that kind of stuff so um, clearly that isn't the prescription because we have it like the, apparently the the um, one of the top diseases in the country is par uh, like bleeding gums, which is actually a, is, a, is, a, is a big issue, and it actually is a disease. It's the body's response to decay in the mouth. So it's and it's funny because it's very easily ignored, or it's just like oh yeah, or my teeth are sensitive. Um, you know, I can't have cold or hot, and so one just goes and finds a brand of toothpaste, um, something like Sensodyne or something like that. There's probably other brands, but and then they just brush their teeth without that, and then they get anesthetized and um, they can function, but nothing is really healing. So the state of affairs with our mouth is not so great, and partly because, as you'll see, uh, the first slide, I have sort of the end of this, this sort of era of using toothpaste, um, a toothpaste that it, it's refreshing in the sense that there's like usually synthetic menthol or cinnamon or something like that. They're not the real plant essences, but they're something that's derived. So that's giving a fresh feeling. And literally brushing your mouth does remove some plaque. It's really the brushing of it that's working. The chemicals that are used in, in commercial toothpaste, as well as the vast majority of ones even at a health food store, because um, one time you'll, or people will go, oh, I don't want to use that stuff at the drugstore and they'll move to something at the health food store. And really it's different ingredients, some of it is a lot better, but it's still not getting to the crux of it and it's kind of just like changing, just changing the colors, but the effect is not so great. Um, things like glycerin will block the um, saliva from uh, working with the enamel of the teeth. 
that's one of the main things that's in, in a lot of toothpaste. And um, also a lot of it's made up with calcium carbonate, a type of chalk. Um, so that isn't healthy for the teeth. There's sodium lauryl sulfate. There's different chemicals. There's mouthwash that contains ethanol, which I was just so shocked to find out that um, mouthwash is causing over 36,000 cases of oral cancer a year. And I mean, to me, it's just ridiculous that that's what's being advised. And that, you know, and it's just, uh, it's just ridiculous, really. It's like uh, causing oral cancer, but that's what's supposed to be cleaning your mouth and getting rid of active decay. So one of the key things when taking care of your tooth and uh, teeth, and one of the key things and reason why not to use toothpaste is because the ingredients inhibit the saliva from re-enamelizing the teeth. So this is key. Your saliva is so important to the functioning of the mouth, it's actually usually, it's, it's supposed to bathe the teeth all day in a solution that's almost alkaline. It's, it's pretty much like a neutral pH, of, it's just like a seven, so it's like just on the side of alkaline. And the saliva has so many things in it, um, probably hasn't even been totally charted in science, but things like um, enzymes. It's even got one enzyme in it that is very similar biochemically to baking soda, which is really neat because I often thought, oh, I don't want to use baking soda. I know it's kind of natural, but it just seemed very white and um, like it was very processed and really what did it have to do with something being natural, but I've since found and learned through my research that it's actually really neat and it is very harmonious and congruent with the saliva and is a great tool for, for keeping your health, your teeth clean. So back to the saliva. So the key is for the saliva to really do its job. It's really one of the unsung heroes of the mouth and when there is the beginnings of a cavity or oral decay, the saliva is one of the first things to go there and it's supposed to keep coating the tooth with this beautiful you know saliva fluid and what your teeth should feel like when they're perfectly clean and when you've just brushed them is almost like like if there's plaque it's kind of like a dry sort of scratchy feeling like a bad rug and if it's uh if it's smooth and clean you'll feel the teeth is like almost like slidey slippery, silky, and that's not only is that the teeth, but that's the enamel in proper order. So that is one of the top ways to also remineralize the teeth. So back on on good the good habits that we're all supposed to have surrounding our teeth. Another thing, so eliminating toothbrush. So really you want to kind of undo many of the things that you've been taught about teeth to get to this new space where you can really care for your teeth. And the other thing is pressure. So that um, perhaps you or people in your house, household have like a toothbrush that's like totally, you know, flattened <laughs> after a few months. So this, this head has been on for several months and as you can see there's no real change to that. And that's definitely, you never want to be changing your toothbrush head because it's like totally squished like that. Hard to do on camera but I'm trying. Okay. So um, you never want to have that. For pressure, you want to be so gentle that you're like brushing the teeth like this. And it's always in one way, but we'll go further into that later. So that's the other thing is pressure. And um, I also think they told you to have good habits, but I kind of think like really if you don't have any habit around brushing your teeth in a way, you can really allow a lot of freshness to come in. And so I also suggest not to brush your teeth in the same spot that you always done, which is like, you know, you just get gla get a chunk of toothpaste, put it in, you brush your teeth, it's just 20 seconds, you spit it out, the sink's all foamy, and you're done. And maybe you'll floss. And so what you might want to do is, you know, sit down and brush your teeth, be in the bath and brush your teeth, be in the shower and brush your teeth, go outside and brush your teeth. And you definitely will be wanting to brush your teeth for a few minutes, take your time, and slow down. So don't worry about being having good habits, just actually try and have no habit and, uh, and be really fresh with the whole thing. Um, the other thing that's kind of, uh, that people have a lot of fear around is with dental, pra you know, it's called a dental practice. And, um, you know, I kind of make fun of this, but um, 
dentistry is still, it's like I have those tools there on the slide because I just feel like, you know, the teeth are so intricate and um, we've got these really, these tools that really are not finessed enough to really even move around the teeth and and get into the intricacy of like what has been naturally created in our bodies and you often hear stories of like well I was having this removed and then like a, you know part of the drill got left behind and then they find it like a few decades later and that's been part of a person's whole decay in their body different things stories like that I mean we're not going to go too much into it but the whole mercury issue mercury amalgams and how really since the 70s since 1971 I believe Hal Huggins is just a really really great holistic dentist and you can also go to his website today but he is really one of the pioneers that really exposed all the really not so pleasant things about mercury fillings so again something really quite archaic that was used to fill the teeth um, even fillings now, um, they're just finding the, the materials that are used are not compatible with the body, uh, really, the majority of the time. Sealing bond bonds, they're put on a lot of children's teeth, or they're say, oh, we'll prevent cavities, we'll just put a sealing on the back molars, only to find out that decay gets under it, and then you could have an issue a few decades later because the bacteria gets trapped. Um, other things that haven't gone so right with dentistry are things like root canals or extractions um, where when the tooth is removed the ligaments haven't been cleaned properly so um, so then that gets closed over the tissue heals or when like an extraction is for example when you've had a wisdom teeth removed and um, a wisdom tooth and then that heals up and then what's left is bacteria and it gets trapped in there and there's a lot of uh, research coming out now about jaw cavitations so lots of exciting things so one reason why we're really going through this and why I really like to share prevention with people is that so we're not making those decisions so that we're not like at the dentist going, oh, do I want a root canal or my tooth extracted and set instead? We just don't want to get to those awkward moments. So um, that's why I feel like, you know, they're kind of putting chainsaws to your teeth because the intricacy of each tooth is amazing. The back molars alone, one molar has over 300 meters of tubules in it, which is so hard to even imagine. So that's one tooth. 300 meters of tubes in one tooth. That, that's amazing. <laughs> and every tooth also is filled with cranial sacral fluid. So it's really a part of the whole body. Um, and that those fluids and those tubes and everything in there is just really precious. So you definitely want to keep each tooth as healthy as you can for your entire life. And we all know that a disruption or an imbalance in the mouth kind of like, well, you know, is anywhere in the body. It's like not so fun. And you can really feel it because it might affect um, digestion or chewing and, and the, the pleasure of your life. So that's, that's about going to the dentist. We'll also talk later um, about what do you do when you go to the dentist, how do you prepare, and how do you find a dentist. So we'll get to that. The other thing is um, processed food definitely equals processed teeth. I mean, we've had a few generations now, uh, really the past 100, really 100 years, where processed food has been coming more and more into this modern society. And that's where a lot of really interesting research has come up about the care of the teeth. A lot of the work about processed food and health of the teeth comes from Dr. Weston Price, and um, his work is just phenomenal. It was in the 1920s. He was head of the um, American Dental Association, and he traveled to a lot of um, what they call primitive cultures, but really at that time it just meant like, you know, uh, cultures that weren't, um, weren't colonized and didn't have uh, foreigners coming to them bringing them you know the white bread the white sugar and all of that so they were e they were people that were eating the traditional diets that they've been eating for you know decades thousands of years and he studied their jaws and he, and their teeth and he he also studied um he studied jaws of like you know skeletons and all kinds of things and what he found was 
in the, in the primitive times and older times and just before you know the 19th century is that um, he might find a cavity, one cavity out of a thousand skulls, which is incredible. It's, when I talk to a group now, and if we could, if we could all hear you right now, and I said, how many of you have had cavities? I mean, maybe two or three of you would say, I haven't had a cavity. So the stats are totally reversed. Now we have maybe one, you know, one in a thousand in, that doesn't have a cavity. So. It's not all to do with brushing, you know, even though we're going to talk about that. And the main thing is that it can come from the inside and the outside. So all processed food is, um, can lead to decay. Not necessarily how you think, though. It's not, about, it's not about the sugar and the sugar being on the teeth, which is really neat. Because the sugar, um, well, the sugar can create an acidic environment. But it's not really about that. What it's about is when the sugar and the processed foods and the refined foods are in the body, it disrupts the digestion and the endocrine system, which actually alter the flow of nutrients to the teeth. And this I find fascinating because what we're learning is, is that your teeth are alive. They're not just these white, you know, stone things that are just like once they've come out of your skin when you were a baby and they developed and you have these adult set of teeth and then that's lit, that's what's left. I mean that's really I feel like how I felt growing up. It's like there's your teeth and they're in and they're done and you're done. But really what we're learning is that they are totally alive and they're almost like an organ. So you almost treat them like your liver, your kidneys or your skin. And in each tooth is like cranial sacral fluid, there's blood vessels, there's nerves, there's tons of things. So, um, hold on, I see I'm getting a question from the host. Uh, yes, these are great. Again, I will, uh, we can see, okay, sorry, a little lower. Just getting, let me see, I'm supposed to just see a camera here. I hope that works, okay. I've been so focused on you, I haven't seen the little notes. Okay, so, um, okay, <laughs> um, so that your teeth are alive, and um, that's what's like, that, so, that, so what that means is, if you do have decay or bacteria, there is also a chance to heal it, so that's what's really fascinating. So, um, what, I'll go into that a little bit more, and first, I'm just going to give you this great quote from a dentist, there are really good ones out there. And it says, even if there has been massive damage, the teeth can be repaired. In fact, research tells us that teeth with early cavity damage can heal themselves once disease Im is eliminated from the oral environment. And that's from Dr. Robert Onara. And he wrote um, Money by the Mouthful. I think it was back in the 80s. And uh, great, I've learned a lot from him as well. So that's been great. Um, here is here's a picture of your tooth in the ocean. So this is to remind you that your teeth exist in in this in your saliva. So the ocean represents your saliva, and it's this sea of of like saline alkalinity that is your saliva and when your tooth is in great saliva you will be getting rid of a lot of the active decay in your mouth and here we have okay so this is we'll go into this slide a lot so your tooth is alive and um, so really something that's really major, the really one of the most major concepts to understand tonight is that decay can begin, let me see if I can get a little pointer thing, okay, yeah, okay, so decay can begin on the outside, external, and internal. So from the external, it's things like the bacteria, basically your mouth is an incubator, and um, if you have a cavity, a cavity is like an infection. So if you had a cavity, I mean, if you had an infection on your hand and it was an open wound, you would take care of it and it would need to air and you would need to be, have it clean. You wouldn't, like, take that open wound and then, I can't even think, but, like, you know, stick it in toilet water or something totally gross like that. Sorry, that was gross, but I'm trying to think of somewhere where there's a lot of microbes, dirt, and germs, 
and you just wouldn't do that to that wound. So the thing with the mouth is that because it's, it's hot in there, it's like an incubator, a lot of things can build up. And if you have, and you, there is always bacteria, there's good and bad bacteria in the mouth. And um, bacterial colonies can form, and those colonies can, they're constantly sloughing off. Um, the microorganisms in the mouth are sloughing off their own excrement and dead skin cells, and they can build little colonies in between the teeth, along the teeth's edges, and they can grow and grow. And that's plaque that becomes tartar, that becomes calculus. And so those are the things that would be, that would be inhibiting the saliva going into, into the tooth and coating the tooth as well. That would be inhibiting a lot of things. So, that, so that's the external, that's a little bit more what we're used to, understanding how tooth decay starts. But really one of the most, you know, it's not a secret, but like not every dentist knows this, but holistic dentists do. And this I just found so fascinating is that really it's the internal. It's the internal and nutrition. So here, along here are the roots and um, this is what's carrying nutrients into the tooth. And this part here, that is the dentin. So that's a major, major thing, the dentin. Um, I just want to get you familiar with this slide. These are your gums. This is the enamel. And these are this is the pulp chamber. Okay. And then I'm going to clear that off for a second. Okay, so with nutrition with internal, so you've got decay coming from either the external, the internal, or both. Usually when the internal has collapsed a bit, uh, like the nutrition's not there, you've got a few generations of unhealthy eating, demineralization, then you know the external has less of a chance too. It's just like even with the skin, you've got, um, you know, a wound can heal a lot faster if the internal is great, if the immune system is great. Um, or like a baby, I know my little guy, he's three, and if he gets a little cut or something, I mean, he heals so fast because he's got it all going on. So, um, again, it's, it's, you know, it's not like we can really separate it, but the internal is so, so neat. So, um, what I want to do to explain the internal is because it's really, it's really connected to the endocrine system and to the hormones. So there's a flow, so the flow feeds the teeth, the nutrition. And if you have poor nutrition, so again, sorry, the, so the stuff's going inside, inside the body, you're digesting it, and then it's feeding the teeth. If you have poor nutrition, it's actually reversing that flow so that the nutrients are escaping out of the teeth and what's going in is the tooth is drawing in more microbes and weakening itself. So the tooth is supposed to be fed from the inside and that feeds this dentin. What feeds the dentin is zero, first of all, zero processed food, so no white sugar, no white flour, the white, 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 you know, white rice, white grains, um, you know, all convenience sort of foods, zero. And they're, you know, that'll do you well in every corner of your life if you don't eat processed foods. I actually haven't eaten any processed foods for over 18 years. I mean, as soon as I figured that out, what was going on at the supermarket, I was like, okay, that's done. And the other stuff tastes better anyway. But, like, you need to make every meal count, and you want it to have minerals in it and the vitamins that you need. So what are the vitamins that you need would be vitamin K2, vitamin D3, um, vitamin C is really great, um, and uh, you need the fat-soluble vitamins, so D3 and K2 and A. Now, D isn't really a vitamin. And I'm sure this has probably been covered on other webinars, but it's actually a hormone, and yes, it is produced by the sun. Um, so interaction with the sun is really great. If you can get out there at like noon for five, ten minutes a day on a sunny day, that's you're going to get in so much vitamin D, and that's what really helps bones grow, and that's what feeds the dentin. And you can also find that if you live in the winter, winter like I, we live in a colder climate, you can take a, you know a good D3 supplement in the winter to take care of that. Also, K2 is a very, very important and rare vitamin. Vitamin K is found in a lot of leafy green vegetables like kale, parsley, coriander, 
However, you need K2, which is more of a fat soluble um, K. And that, the apparently, the highest source that Dr. Weston found was vitamin K2 is highest in grass fed cat butter. So, a cow that makes butter in June, well, the cow doesn't make the butter, but you know what I'm saying. So, the butter and um, that June grass fed butter has the highest amount of vitamin K2 in it. There are also supplements that you can get for that. Again, I'm not, I don't have any affiliations with any vitamin company, but I have found that Thorne Research Labs has a really good vitamin K. And um, vitamindrevolution.com has a really good vitamin D that doesn't have magnesium stearate and is in a vegetarian capsule. Um, so th those are good resources. And also greenerpastures.org has a fermented, um, ethically produced um, June-fed or June grass butter that you can also eat and they also have those in vegetarian capsules. So those are the best resources and the cleanest resources that I have found for those supplements because there might be a time when you really need to catch up. So that's what feeds the teeth and I also want to share with you um, a study that was done in 1920s by a husband and wife doctor team. I'm going to see if I can get this up here. Okay, well, first I'll just show you. There was three groups of children, and um, one was just fed a regular diet of um, oatmeal, and um, they were, so in oatmeal, because oatmeal is supposed to be really good, <laughs> good breakfast cereal. Then group two was fed the same thing, but also given vitamin D. And in group, group three, they ate a grain-free diet and vitamin D. So what you'll see is the blue column is the, is the cavities that are forming, and then the red bar is what's healing. And I, okay, see that? See that big red line? That's group three that ate no grains and had lots of vitamin D. Group one was just fed oatmeal. That's the big blue line. And group three was fed the oatmeal, but also a ton of vitamin D. So, I love that study because it really shows like how diet can affect and what's going on is the grains, the oatmeal was processed and also if they were eating grains, um, they weren't being soaked. So the main thing with the grains is they contain a phytic acid and that inhibits nutrient absorption. But what it also shows the study is the effectiveness, the real effectiveness of vitamin D because vitamin D has a great relationship with the bones and it really helps the bones to grow. The other thing for the, for the teeth from the inside, nutrition from the inside, is um, phosphorus. So you want a good phosphorus balance. Sometimes you may need to supplement that with that. There's also homeopathic remedies of phosphorus. What you don't want to do is take calcium supplements. Calcium supplements, um, beyond being really f just sort of chalk, and not healthy and totally synthetic, but like calcium carbonate, that kind of thing, is they actually create excess calcium secretions in the saliva, and that can take your um, your saliva to be more too alkaline, and also excess calcium secretions in the saliva create calculus that creates a lot of the tartar buildup. So that is also an issue for people, and really it doesn't go into the bones. And what what they're finding is that it creates calcification. So in between bones and joints, people are getting keloids and you know arthritis is actually getting worse and things like that. So definitely avoid calcium. How you want to create calcium in the body though is with the vitamin D and um, taking um, how you make calcium or the body to make calcium is phosphorus, um, phosphorus, silica, and magnesium. So um, silica is created with horsetail, with nettles, phosphorus would be like kale and green leafy, leafy vegetables, and the highest source of magnesium is organic unadulterated chocolate. So that's really fun. So you can eat chocolate and not get cavities if it, you know, if it's good chocolate. So that's how you also make the calcium in the body, and when the body's generating it, it's different than than just taking the supplements and actually throwing the whole thing out of whack. So, um, 
that's a lot to think about for you to take internally and that will really change the health of your teeth. Also, um, if you do drink any dairy or anything, um, pasteurized dairy does um, is, isn't so good for the teeth because the calcium doesn't actually get, get to the bones and stuff. But if you do and you're able to do raw cheese or raw dairy, then that's super great as well. So, um, I want to give you another quote from Hal Huggins, and um, he explains it. So, he talked about a doctor that he ran into, and this is in 1981, and um, this Dr. Steinman explains how fluid moves from the pulp chamber, so that's here, the pulp chamber into the dentin and then through the enamel into the mouth and that builds the enamel and makes for really great hard white teeth. Um, and the fluid that is released like that is very similar to the fluid exchange with the cells in the body. Um, and he also explained, it explains that by altering the function of the endocrine glands that the flow, the fluid flow could be reversed to such the extent that the tooth sucks in the bacteria and um, the bacteria, the acids, the other things from the mouth to the tooth, so that's sucking it in. Um, and that's pretty major. And what causes that, he was saying, is the refined sugar fluoride in the water um, and different things like that. It was a great book that I read and I found this, it was the only one I could find that really explained children's teeth and it's called, here, Ooh, where is that? <laughs> Why Raise Ugly Kids from Dr. Hal Huggins. It's a great find. I think you'll only be able to find it used um, but he also goes into orthodontics and creating space in the mouth and because we haven't all had proper nutrition for a long time the jaw doesn't develop as as large as big, and we're having you know. Then I remember too. I was eight, and they were like, "Well, there's not enough room for the other teeth in the mouth. We'll have to pull some out." And I'm sure many of you have had that. Or why teeth don't grow as straight isn't really hereditary or genetics. It's totally got to do with prenatal nutrition, um, you know, nutrition from zero to three, and so on. So also when we're talking about babies and children with dental care. Um, you know, if you can, really you want to be breastfeeding because formulas, they don't, they don't have it. <laughs> they don't have what the breast milk has. So really, um, do take a vitamin D supplement if you're nursing and, um, you know, think of all those nutrition things while you're pregnant and while you're raising your little ones. And that will really help. Um, and then you won't need to spend any money on braces and dental visits. So that'll be good. Um, okay, so then the next area that we have is the, so we've got the internal thing and the flow of the teeth, and now I want to do more on the external and the different, the different parts of that. Um, so here, if you get a cavity, let's just say, I'll make a black thing here. Here's a cavity starting. I make there. It's kind of a cavity. <laughs> okay, just having fun with the PowerPoints. Okay, so if you've got a cavity starting, the really neat thing is that the dentin here starts sending these things called odontoblasts. Yep, odontoblasts to the cavity site, and that starts healing it and laying down a secondary. Uh, secondary layer of dentin. So that I just find amazing because what 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 the way I was raised, where I thought the teeth were just these white little rocks in the mouth, is that your teeth are totally alive and they're responding to attrition. They're responding to caries. And what a carry is is a cavity, which is also known as in an enamel lesion. And you'll often see it starting, and it will be brown and the teeth are alive. They don't remain passive, but they respond to the infection, which is the cavity right there. They're responding to that, and they produce the odontoblasts from the dental pulp, and generally they're responding to all the damaged tissue 
laying down the secondary level of dentin, and then your saliva is also respondent, is responding. So if you can get your saliva to be in the right condition, which is just that pH of 7, and if you have a lot of um, issues with the mouth, it's an easy way to test, is just get those pH strips and just check in. Are you at a 7? Um, especially if you're on medication or different things, or you're experiencing that you might have a dry mouth from, from different medications or diabetes, you can really check in with this and make sure that that's being taken care of. The other thing is that I get a lot of questions about in regards to the external and to the enamel is how do we keep teeth white? Um, and pr just to let you know, I mean, there is no bleaching kit out there, that, it, that whether you're going to the dentist or um, buying something at the drugstore. It's just, uh, th eventually it will, it will eat the enamel and it will, you know, it will cause your teeth to be more dependent on the bleaching because you, you're losing the enamel, enamel, it's wearing away, and um, it's just not recommended at all, at all, at all, at all. You, what you want to do, again, is create the, the white from the inside out, which is something, again, where we were approaching everything so cosmetically, so on the surface, and what we're finding is below the white, below the teeth or inside the tooth is a whole world. So how the teeth, the, te the tooth is actually like transparent and what makes it white is the dentin. So the health of the dentin is reflected in the, the tooth. So that's how you want to take care of the whiteness and allowing it to shine through is again having the healthy dentin so following all those nutrition things that we've talked about will really help the dentin and allowing the saliva to be contributing to the health of your teeth rather than eating it away by being too acidic or being too filled with bacteria to actually help the tooth because if it's in the right condition it's like one of your tooth's best friend um, so there's also so we talked about the dentin the saliva um, the enamel and um, the pulp chamber and the cementum isn't something that's in the diagram but that's what's holding the um, tooth to the jawbone and there's the cementum and then under each tooth are tons of filaments each tooth has like tons and tons maybe hundreds of filaments that attach it to the jaw so the the health of the filaments is very important and again that's with nutrition and the health of the gums is extremely important so you know nice bright um, pink healthy gums uh, that aren't bleeding is definitely how you want to be having your gums so that's a big area to talk about because that's where the decay actually first starts um, we think it may be in the tooth but the besides the inner nutrition the health of the gums is the first place that gets weakened and it's also but the great thing is it's actually the easiest thing to cure so if you've got 98 percent of the population with um, poor gum health and actually like apparently 98 percent of the population have like bleeding gums the good thing is is you can turn that around depending on your health within 24 hours 48 hours or a week so that's the good news okay so we're going to explain the gums next which is here so I like to explain that um, the teeth are like or the gums sorry the gums are like turtlenecks for the teeth and, um, and that's how you want to have your gums like a really great uh, uh, turtleneck around each tooth like that so when when they're not and when there's decay or when there's a buildup of um, uh, what, all along the gum line here, uh, if bacteria get in, then this starts pulling away, and um, that starts the gum to fold back, and then the enamel. Oh, that one's not showing up. Oh, there it is. Okay, so then the enamel in this area, so this is like, so this is a tooth that isn't as happy because it's like the gums are not like a turtleneck and it's starting to pull back and that is what most people know as receding gums 
And so when it starts to pull back, this part of the tooth here, this whole part, that enamel isn't the same as this enamel. And that enamel is more porous and more susceptible to decay. So that's when um, you really uh, like trouble starts, so to speak. And then definitely what you never want to have there is a receding gum line where you've got like the molars exposed and um, you know you get like the bone start you get bone loss and wearing away and that's like a cowl neck and you just you don't want to go there so back to the healthy gum where this is what you want and then that layer right here or that part where the gum and the, the gum and the tooth join the sulca is called is very very precious so that union of the gum and the tooth is one of the greatest areas to care for. So when somebody starts brushing their teeth, and here's a toothbrush, okay, we'll pretend that arrow's a toothbrush, and it's just going back and forth, 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 you're wearing away that gum so that it becomes like that. That's part of one of the reasons the gum gets w worn away. The other thing is, once it's worn away a little bit, things get in there more too. So when you get, and then things start pushing back, all that bacteria, the microbes, food, they start loosening the gums. It's kind of like if you have, a, let's say you have a room and there's an area rug in it and you sweep all around and you're always sweeping and it's a very clean room and you're using your floor cleaners and you're mopping and everything, but you never clean the rug, you'll find under that rug even though you never lifted it, after about a month, there'll be a whole bunch of stuff under there. All these dust bunnies, their little grains, little things and dirt. So that's what happens if you're not taking care of that join, is that things sort of get swept under there. And, um, and that therefore, you want to brush. If you brush, we'll go over this again later, but um, gum up, that's on the bottom, and then gum down, you're going to be it's almost like you're vacuuming the rug out so you're not getting that join weakened because that join is very precious it can easily weaken but it can easily easily grow back I've had so many people that have been like slated for you know gum surgery and um, with with care and attention you have to do your part but and if you know what to do because often people have no idea what to do and they're just scheduled for surgery and it will take care of the problem temporarily but often um, people have had re receding gum surgery that's been fixed only to find five years or a decade later they have to have the tooth redone or that tooth still has another issue because none of the habits have changed that could prevent that um, surgery in the first place so a lot of surgery is being done and, and nobody's getting an education about how to take care of that they're just saying well you better keep, keep your teeth clean you didn't do a good job and so that's what I find is a lot of a lot of us have been going, getting our teeth cleaned, going to the dentist. Maybe things haven't been great every visit, but we're not really understanding how we need to take care of our teeth so that we can change the habits and some of the programming that's been going on. So that's how you have to take care of the gums, and I hope that explains that. Then we'll move through. Um, and now we're going to focus on the on the dental steps. So I'm not, you know, if you can enlarge your screen, I'm going to go over each one. If you need a copy, we have it on our website, or you can email us for a printable version. And we do also have um, when you get a product, when you get the dental kit, we have this this decal here. That just you can put right on your mirror and it comes off of your mirror it's a decal not a sticker so you can get the steps right there so no worries if you can't totally read that because I can see that the printing is pretty small so we've talked about a lot of things and how to care for the teeth so this isn't you know this part is about preventing root canals and preventing decay and um, if you do this every day I know and I know some days you won't and that's fine because I don't necessarily do it every day um, and especially when you have children, you're like, ah, oh, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> but if you can do this morning and night, you don't have to brush after each meal um, at all. You may need to floss or something, if, but the great thing you, what you can do after a meal is rinse. If you rinse with salt water after a meal and you're really having, 
especially if you need to really pull out of a dental situation, then that's great to do. But if you brush right after a meal, it's like moving around. The, the, the mouth might still be acidic. For example, if you had a glass of orange juice and then brush your teeth right away, it's not good because the mouth is just in too much of an acidic state. You need, need to give a chance for the saliva to neutralize the food. And, and it really, you need to digest first before you brush your teeth. The stomach and the oral, oral area are so tied in together. Um, as you can tell, even with just the nutrients that are being fed up into the teeth. So again, like another way to explain that, how I was saying that we need to feed the teeth, it's almost like the tooth and it has roots, it's like a tree. And those roots are drawing up all the nutrients from the soil, which is your stomach and everything that you're eating, and it's drawing it up. That's how you want, want to do it. If you reverse it, where's my hand in the camera? If you reverse it, then it's sucking the things that you don't want in the oral environment. Because really at, at any given time, you have bacteria in the mouth. There's good bacteria. And so they still actually haven't figured that out, the whole, because the mouth has um, a lot of probiotics in it as well as bacteria. But interestingly, when there's a lot of uh, bacteria in the mouth, or I mean there's decay in the mouth, there's actually an increase in the good bacteria. So I think we're still trying to understand all of that. And the whole thing with sugar um, that I wanted to actually touch on a little bit further is it's not like the sugar that's totally an issue for the teeth. It's actually that the sugar is disruptive to the endocrine system. So all so the hypothalamus, which is the grandmaster switch for the for the endocrine system, and all those hormonal secretions, which are way beyond like testosterone and estrogen. Uh, we're talking the adrenal glands, the pituitary glands, the pineal glands, and more. All of that is affecting the state and health of your body. Nutrition is affecting that, and sugar is very disruptive to the hormone system. And as well, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, so sugar. What they found in um, a study they did with rats is that if the rats drank the soda, I don't know how they did it <laughs> again, but I'm just trying to picture the rats drinking the soda, it wasn't uh, creating decay on the tooth. But if they fed the soda through a straw, or unfortunately, if a part of the study, they injected the rat's stomachs with soda, that's when the cavities were starting. So it wasn't about it really making contact with the teeth, but it was about how it causes that internal decay and it reverses the flow of the teeth. So I hope that explains that really more because it's kind of a big concept. It's not a big, big concept, but it's definitely, I think what that does is really change the whole way that we've thought about teeth and how the teeth are alive and how the teeth really are a part of the rest of the body. So what I'm explaining to you now is how to take care of the teeth. Eight successful steps that I really thought about for years and put together and put into practice myself and have seen um, it really like I got rid of an abscess, I got rid of different things, and what this program does, it's not really a program, but is these eight steps, is if you have any area of your mouth that has active decay, it really pulls you out of it. And if you have to go to a dentist or get a cleaning, it really prepares you for it, so that you're going to the, to the hygienist or the dentist with a way better condition in your mouth. Um, did you know that you can't actually donate blood for like 24 or 48 hours after you've had your teeth cleaned because the amount of bacteria and microbes that are released into the bloodstream are so high. And if you're in a weakened state or you're like, you know, 90 and your health isn't so good, sometimes it is thought that that's actually caused people to die a few days later because again, they're so, uh, they got so much release and um, the body starts responding to that as an immune emergency. And even within two or four days of, between two and four days of neglect of your mouth, your body starts sending, your, your, the gums send messages to your immune system and your body starts releasing white blood cells to deal with the inflamed response of the immune system. So it really, a lot of stuff really does start in your mouth and again, if you feel like you're getting a cold or anything, you really want to be taking care of your teeth in those moments to really boost your whole immune system. So these are the steps that I found just to be really awesome and really quite simple. And if you do them, that will be about the right amount of time you should be spending on your teeth every day, your teeth every day. So first of all, we start with 
the salt rinse. So what we do in our bathroom, which I look at the camera, is we have a jar of water. You can use a mason jar. This is about 500 ml. We have some great spring water that we use. And then I've got some salt here. And um, you just put it in. I do about an ounce to uh, 16 ounces. And it doesn't have to be accurate, or I never am. You can be accurate. But I get a lot of uh, questions from people, like, you know, exactly how much. And it's about an ounce, could be two ounces to 16 ounces. It's really not something I ever measure. And there's your salt water, and you just let that sit. And it actually all the salt will be absorbed in a few days. And then what you do to start your whole routine is you always ha use a little glass. You don't want to be swigging out of the bottle, especially if you're sharing with a family, with family members, or even yourself, because you want to keep, you don't want any backwash in there. So you just pour yourself a cup, a little shot glass, half a shot glass, put it in, swish it around, get it in between the teeth, and then you spit it out. And then you can scrape your tongue. And one thing I found with talking about dental stuff is like elegant ways to how do you show people elegant ways to brush your teeth so I'm not like ah <laughs> here's how you clean your tongue one thing you can also do is we have the two serums I'm sure many of you know if there's the healthy gumdrops is the yogi two serum if you really want to go for it when you're using your tongue scraper is you take a drop of the serum and then you slide it on the tongue scraper and that is really great. Now, you're too, this is so antibacterial and antifungal um, that it doesn't matter you put it on your finger first, just in case you're going to ask me that. You slide it on and then clean your tongue. So that is a great way. And it's amazing because you just want to be getting out as many microbes and plaque out of the mouth as possible. So it is really a great simple thing. And ancient Ayurvedic um, oral care as well to just scrape the tongue. Then the next thing you want to do is again I'm going to give you the really the focus steps that we do and you can find your alternative to that as well so if you if you just want to use your regular toothbrush that's totally fine but what we use here is see this rod there this is an ionic toothbrush and I've had this one for 10 years and I just changed the head when I need to have a need to have a fresh tooth head and um, it's activated, the ionic thing is activated by light, so you can just hold it up to the light, you can hold it up to the sun, and that activates the ionic rod, and what that does is it creates uh, negative ions in your mouth, and the negative ions are the good ions, and um, it acts kind of like a magnet, and it, to, it actually, just this alone with nothing on it, will deal with 40% of the plaque in your mouth and you really will notice a difference. What it also does, one of the major things I find is it really creates like that silky saliva. So that's what we do for the first stage is the ionic and I always put a drop of the healthy gumdrops on there. You can, it's really easy. I'll just really show you each step and then you just wait for that one drop to come out. It takes just a second. You don't shake the bottle out. The one drop will pour out. So you can use the healthy gum drops. One drop. This it's really truly so potent. We're not really used to potent things in this this society in this day and age. Um, it's a lot about dilution, and um, this is very potent. And again, you're using one drop. We're not diluting it with water or anything like that. But actually, speaking of water, you can take your salt water. You can add one drop, and then you have an amazing mouthwash that is anti-carcinogenic and that's all you need to do. Um, we could make a mouthwash but I'm also like you know you can really make it yourself and salt by the way maybe I should have mentioned this is totally antibacterial and it totally has a has a way of getting the, of rid of the bacterial colonies in the mouth. It also has a way of making the saliva more alkaline from acid and it can also swish in between the, the teeth and get rid of the interdental bacteria colonies and if you add a drop of the serum it's really quite amazing too so you can use the healthy gum drops or the yogi 2 serum this has um, people often say which one where am I there <laughs> which one 
Um, and they actually have the exact same effect. They're just sort of different botanicals, but they create the same effect. This is with neem, which is for some people a really interesting great flavor, and for some it's kind of it's kind of weird. But it also has it's all of the ingredients are active, and they all are antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and they can deal with things like superbugs. They can enhance the immune system. Um, it also has clove, cinnamon, cardamom, mastic, which is an ancient tree sap that is amazing for oral care. And then the healthy gumdrops has rose, otto, which is one of the most antibacterial and analgesic oils on the planet. And it, it's not like, it's, it's real rose. And I know it's like a lot of people don't think of that as the first thing. It's also very, very expensive. Uh, it's such a precious oil, it takes about 40 rose heads to make one drop. And it's got peppermint, clove, cinnamon, tea tree, and oregano, and thyme in it. So this is more a bit of a classic tasting one. So just so you know, that is the difference. You really only need one. Some people get two. And um, there was one more thing I was going to say on those, but I can't remember. So we'll wait. Okay, so then you put your, your one on there, your one drop. And then you're brushing the teeth. And here, I'll really show you. You go like this, up on the gum, and down, and down. And on the bottom, up, and up. What you want to be doing at this time is really, this is when you're really taking care of the gums at this stage. So actually, if you know, you're really actually going further. You're getting right on the gum, and down, and down. So that you're really just brushing over the gum. You're not doing this, and you're not going back and forth. You can go back and forth uh, on, on those teeth, and um, you're going to be going about this slow, like this. That's how slow. If you think you're going slower, slow, go slower than that. Slow is always good for toothbrushing. And again, you're doing your whole teeth, and it's feeling quite good. <laughs> so that's how you do those. And again, this area, I okay. Get those back teeth. Uh, like uh. So you're always feeling that your gum is going towards your tooth. So that's that phase, which is brush with the ionic toothbrush. Use a dry, much more effective if the toothbrush is dry. So I know it's classic. You put it under the tap, put it on the foam, and brush that way. But dry, you'll have way better connection to each tooth. Use the, oh my god, I forgot something. <laughs> Oops. Uh, use the, I'm glad I read the steps. So you use the tooth serum, one of the tooth serums, and then a drop of the neem, see if I can do this, the neem enamelizer. Um, that creates the environment so that your saliva is re-enamelizing your teeth. It's a very gentle, slightly saponifying um, mixture with jojoba and cinnamon and coconut oils and olive oil and a bit of spring water and that saponifies together. You can also use, if it's totally, totally natural, like a bar of natural soap, like a Dr. Bronner bar of soap. So that's where you add one drop to that and I forgot about that part, sorry. And, and then to activate all the antibacterial, antifungal, oh my god, and the neem and analyzer has neem too. Okay, so then you brush your teeth like I was saying. So that's this, the step after the tongue scraping. Then after that, because you want to polish the teeth and this is where you can also get them whiter, this is the external part of getting them white, is on an electric round toothbrush. And um, I've tried so many toothbrushes, so many electric ones, the ones that have like the sonic sound like vibrating five billion times in a second um, that are like hundred dollars. But I found this, these are the best. And again, I have no affiliation, but it's oral. This one is Oral B Vitality right there. But what's more important than the brand is that it has a round head and it, it's rechargeable just so you're not wasting toothbrush. But anyway, and these, uh, you can get new heads as well. So the main thing is that it's round and that it's that smaller version. And then you can put on a drop of the serum again here. And you just wait for that one drop. And then we have a tooth polish. Now if you want to start right away or you're on a budget, 
you, this is where you can use a mixture of like fine, fine um, sea salt and baking soda. And this, this one is we use a miracle salt, which is a really, like, really amazing, amazing salt that's been uh, processed really specially. We use magnesium, arrowroot, which is a herb, sodium. We use baking soda and MSM. And it's a small, smaller jar, but if you're going to use this is going to last you months. And then use the serum on there will attract just the right amount of um, powder that you need. And again, you're going to use it dry because that's going to give you a better grip on your teeth. And for this phase, you're really just concentrating on the tooth itself and you're actually kind of avoiding the gums because the one thing I found with electric toothbrushes is that they're a bit um, crazy, so to speak, like they're going in a lot of directions for the gum line. And if you get too aggressive with an electric toothbrush, the gum line starts going away. So this one's really for your teeth and you're going to focus on the teeth all around and where this is also really great is like the back molars and I found this is awesome for the f um, backs of the front teeth right here uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then you just get each tooth it's kind of like the polishing phase of the dentist which they really just do is like a cosmetic thing it's just to sort of finish off the teeth so that is, um, what step is that? That is number four. Then number five, This, these we'll have on the site soon, but they're really uh, available at pretty much any drugstore for like $5. And it's a rubber tipped gum thing, they call it. Gum thing, I'm sure it has a better name than that. But again, what you do is you just put a drop of serum on there. Also check with your tongue at this point, like. Do you feel that you got everywhere? You know, do you may even need a second time with the ionic toothbrush, especially those back molars. And you can feel where the plaque is left. And then this really helps. This you'll find other plaque comes off with that. And you actually just follow each tooth along the gum line. So I can't believe I'm doing this, but I will. You got to go like that and follow each one. Now after each tooth, you're actually going to want to wipe it because you're going to find that generally you may have plaque coming off. By using the tooth serum, it's taking off the plaque and then adding really healing um, essential oils and botanicals to that area. That's the other thing I was going to say about the tooth serums here, Yogi or the Healthy Gum Drops, is not only are they antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, they actually regenerate and feed the gum tissue. So they're so healing for receding gum lines and the protocol that I'm giving you right now is very healing for receding gum lines. So what it does is it essential oils, and again we're talking genuine and authentic essential oils. This isn't like gift store aromatherapy. This isn't like, you know, this is the real deal. And when it's the real deal, they're really potent and they are, um, they're, you know, each oil has over 500 botanical chemical components that are working together. And um, they're great for the immune system. They've been used medicinally for centuries. And when they're, when they're again, they're genuine and they're used properly. They're very powerful because, again, it's like they're sometimes even more powerful than herbs because one drop has over, f like, 40 rose heads, for example. So to he really heal the gum tissue, the other thing is the essential oils are one of the really one of the only things in the world that can pass through the lipophilic membrane of the body, and that lipophilic means um, the skin, the fat, the gum tissue. So they're able to penetrate that in seconds and enter the cells and and, and work with the body in a in a good way. So they get in there and they can get into the white the, the I mean sorry they can get into the cells and they can get into the gum line and they can actually penetrate areas where there has been a root canal they can penetrate the healing tissues they get the circulation going they get the lymph system going they the their sea buckthorn in the healthy gum drops that helps to actually regenerate the very tissue of the gums itself so by following this protocol it's it's great for everything and especially the gums and especially if you have receding gums you definitely want to be doing this thing and really working on the sulca which is the line where the gums and the teeth meet and dentists can measure, they'll measure your gum pockets and you want to have a general, oh, sorry, you want to generally have a one or a two and some people can get as low as an eight, nine or ten 
And you actually, you, I mean, if you have anything below two, you want to heal that gum tissue and bring it back up, and you want to get that full turtleneck going around each tooth. And this is a great simple tool to do that. And if you really do do this twice a day, you really, and you have what one area you're seeing gum, you will bring it back down to a one or two pocket. So that is the next step. Then you're going to floss. And um, with flossing with the serums, if you don't like flossing, you will. I promise you, you will. And if you do like flossing, you'll love it even more. So you take off a piece of floss, then you take a drop of serum, the easiest way, you just put a drop on your finger, and um, you know, this is my favorite floss. It's available at a lot of health food stores, it's Dr. Tongue's Smart Floss. We also have it on our site, and we, uh, with the larger bottles of serum, we just give it to you for free. And uh, you just glide that one drop all along the floss. And then I'm sure you've been taught how to do this. You wind it around the fingers, and then you floss. This floss isn't coated, and it's not um, got. You definitely don't want to be using any Johnson and Johnson petroleum stuff from the store. This I've found works with so many people, and they say in their material that it actually takes care of 30% more stuff in between your teeth. And I really got to say I totally agree. When I found this floss, I was totally thrilled. And um, then you just floss each tooth. And make sure to go around each side. I hope <laughs> you can see that. So then I actually say on the steps to floss twice. And some people email me and they go, oh, do I have to floss twice? And you actually, no, you don't because you, you can do whatever you want. But when you floss twice, you'll really see why you're flossing twice because there's more stuff on the second time around. And a lot of cavities start in between the teeth in the interdental proximal areas. So that is the next step, flossing once, flossing twice, and then you're going to take your handy dandy sea salt and you're going to do one more um, shot of it. Pour it in the thing, half, half a shot, I think they used to call them jiggers, you do half of one of those, swish, 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 and spit out. Um, and then the step eight is just a check in. So if you have an area that's receding or a cavity, then you're going to want to put just, again, the serum one tiny drop and then you'll put it on a t on an area if that gum needs help or also if you have any like anything going on with your mouth a canker herpes anything like that you can put a drop on too and you're going to find it's very effective and then another thing that we have this isn't part of the eight steps it's an extra thing see can you see that needle on there that is um it's like a it's like a syringe, but there's no needle. It's like a blunt end, and it's pointy. What you can do with that is pour the sea salt in here, um, put a drop of the serum in there, and then you simply like filling up any needle. It's sort of hard to show you. And there's nothing in my cup, but I'm just pr you know pretending. And you would draw it up like that. And what this is like is it's kind of like a portable water pick it needs no power and it's also it actually gets into like way smaller areas so you can get in between the teeth to clean and rinse an area or if you had like wisdom teeth issues or something you can again rinse the area send the salt down but what this is also for is for helping receding gums or just areas that need extra special help so you just put it right by the gum line or in between the teeth and you flush that stuff in there good for abscesses as well so that is part of a su successful self-dentistry kit that we have, um, but it certainly doesn't have to be a part of the eight steps that you do every day. But um, if you do have special needs, you'll want to be doing that as well. So um, before we go to questions, I just wanted to touch on um, on going to a dentist, and because um, I'm sure that's going to come up a lot. And um, if your dentist isn't sort of vibing with the things that you want to do if they still want to do fluoride treatments and they're like you know thinking you're asking too many questions <laughs> you might want to find a new dentist there's a lot of them out there and they're in the United States you can look for the um, oh, I think it's called the Holistic Dental Association something like that they have a website with a directory 
Um, Dr. Hal Huggins also has a website, and they you can call them, and they do have a referral service as well as their own. Again, I'm not associated with him, but he's done a lot of work, and they do have a directory. You also want to look for words like um, a biological dentist, holistic dentist. You want to ask the dentist if they use lasers or ozone, because now if they have to do an extraction or something, or if they're cleaning out an old extraction, they'll use lasers to clean that out. You'll want to see if they use homeopathics, or I, I know we have a dentist and he just became a naturopathic doctor. So um, those are the questions you're going to want to ask a dentist. Also, does the eight steps is, um, take care of the calculus buildup? And it does a pretty good job, but sometimes there's a time when if you haven't gone to the dentist in like five years and haven't been taking care of good teeth or your health, you may have a lot of calculus buildup. And that calculus is also pushing the gum lines back. So what you may want to do is follow this protocol for about a month and take um, vitamin C, about 1,000 milligrams every day. And again, this is just uh, my opinion. I'm sure it's nothing that's a been approved ever by the FDA, but <laughs> we'll just continue. So you take about 1,000 milligrams a day. And again, you want to take a real vitamin C. You don't want to be taking uh, ascorbic acid. You want to find one that's naturally derived, about 1,000 to 2,000 micro, or, hmm, 2,000 somethings a day, I forget, I think it's milligrams. And um, you really want to build up your immune system and get your gum tissue and your teeth as healthy as possible, especially the gum tissue, because when you do go get that scraping, a lot of stuff's going to be released. What we also recommend is take your own salt water with the essential oils in it or just your own salt water and do your own rinsing. That way you'll know you'll have good water because a lot of the water that's coming in, although if you have a holistic dentist, I'm sure they have a really good water filter, but because those tubes sit every night, uh, some studies have done that have found over 70% 70, 70 of the water in a dental office that they use to rinse your mouth is dirtier than like pond, like scum puddle water. So you're opening up all the stuff. You're, if you're getting your teeth cleaned, often the gums are bleeding. You're scraping all the way out of stuff, and then you're rinsing it with just totally poor water. So you want to be using good water. Bring your own water, and then and bring something like the gum drops because um, then you want to be coating your gums and stuff afterwards, and you can even ask them to floss with it. So you're immediately filling those open areas um, with that. And you'll find if your gums are bleeding and you floss with the gum drops or Yogi 2 Serum just once or twice, like one or two days, that spot will not bleed again. So I'm so excited to hear from you and uh, we'll be going to questions. So I think at this part David might say something and then we're